Hey everybody, guess what I'm doing? A tier list video, because you, you, you thought those were over, but hey, they're here. So, a long time ago, I made a top 10 video about Plants vs. Zombies 2. Yeah, that. Uh, that got really big, even though it's really bad. Please don't watch it. It's terrible, and I'm still embarrassed of it. But I've gotten comments on that video asking for a uh, renewal because of the plants that were added since that video, and because some of my opinions were kind of silly and I've also been asked to talk about my least favorite plants so I decided to just wrap everything up into one little video the tier list video because it shows all my opinions on all these guys so yeah before we begin there is going to be one rule which is the same as last time no plants that you need to purchase through real life money gem plants are okay because you can get gems for free you don't have to buy gems but any plant that requires you to pay for it you were not including. I'm also not gonna include the mints, only because I, I, I don't understand those completely. I think you need to do like the tournament thing, but even then, that because of that, I can't really judge them. So I'm not gonna be talking about the mints or premium plants. Uh, anything else is fine though. So here we go. First off, we got A K E E. He's a lobbing plant that can hit uh, multiple zombies, basically like Bloomerang, except actually good. I'd say he's about B tier. Aloe is the only plant that can actually heal other plants, but you need to place it behind said plant and only heals one plant and takes a long time to heal. And the healing droplet doesn't even really do that much when you consider that a zombie that's attacking the plant is probably just doing constant damage. I could see this plant being okay if it's behind a walnut in like a not very hard level, but overall it's just not worth using him, especially if you have walnut first aid. Banana launcher is 500 sun but once you have them you basically get a little cherry bomb not even a cherry bomb actually i don't think the explosion is that big i he's he's like strong but it's i don't know if he's really worth it i'm gonna put him in e tier i think he's just not worth the price you gotta pay all that sun and the long uh recharge time between launches you know what no i'm actually you know what? He, he's still good so i'll keep him in d bloomerang though nope that's an e tier it's such it's just so over underwhelming and so many other plants do its job better if there are a bunch of zombies in the lane then it doesn't even do damage to most of them and it just wastes time with how slow it fires blover is an interesting case in that it insta kills flying zombies and does nothing else so it's kind of hard to place it's a little bit of a kind of plant that I'm gonna go into when we get to other plants that's kind of just a tool used for specific things, and so it's hard to judge it on its overall usage, but because of how common flying zombies are, I think that makes it so usable that we're, we're gonna put it in S tier. It's not a plant that, like, you know, it's a go-to plant in every situation, but whenever there are flying zombies, you're gonna wanna take it. Bonk Choi is another plant that's, like, not bad, it's just kinda not as good as most other options. I'll put it in D. It's just kind of, eh. Bowling Bulb is really sad, because this could actually be a pretty decent plant if it weren't for how it works. So if you don't know, this plant will fire one of three bulbs uh, in order green, blue, orange. Each one does more and more damage compared to the last one. And when they hit a zombie, they'll go diagonal and bounce off of other zombies pinballing around at random. The only issue is that each time a bulb is rolled, it has to regrow. But basically, once all three bulbs have been bowled, it then regrows the first one, and then if there's a zombie in that lane, it will instantly bowl the first one and then regrow the first one. So there has to be no zombies in the lane in order for the more powerful ones to regrow at all. So most of the time you're just gonna get a slow fire rate, not very strong projectile that bounces off zombies. It's not very good. I'm gonna put it in E only because it's not 100% useless and yeah i know aloe technically isn't useless but it's pretty much useless i i just don't like it cabbage pole is c i guess it's really just a pea shooter but it lobs and there are zombies that block lobbing and zombies that block direct so it's just kind of another pea shooter you'd use it just depending on what the situation is celery stalker i really want to put an s i don't know if he belongs in s and actually no i'm gonna put you and A. Celery Stalker is really good actually because 
The DPS on this thing is insane. It's really strong. The only downside is that it only hits zombies that are right behind it, but it stays in the ground so that zombies walk over it and then it pops back up, up behind them and destroys them. And it's really good for taking out even really high health zombies like cone robots. And it actually has a bit more health than your average plant. It's not like, you know, it's not anywhere even near charred guard, but it has more health than your average plant. And it's plant food effect just makes more of it. It doesn't seem very good, but in actuality, it's very useful because these things will stay around for a long time because the only way to really destroy them is to overwhelm them, is to have a zombie behind it triggering it to pop up and then have a zombie in front of it to attack it. But even then, it takes a lot of zombies to do that because of how quickly it kills normal zombies. I want to put it in S. I mean, it might not be really S, it might be A or B, but I feel like it should be an S just because of how underrated it is, honestly. It's really good. Next up, we got Charred Guard. Who is... A weird one. He's a defensive plant with not a lot of health, but he can throw zombies back up to three times and can be healed to regrow those throwing arms. He's, I don't know, he's like kind of useless, but also actually kind of great. You know what? If you have an imitator and you could just keep healing them, they can actually be really good. And they can even throw back gargantuars, so I'm gonna put him in B. Cherry Bomb. Easy S, I don't think anyone's surprised by that. It's the most balanced, explosive, it's just good, powerful, big size, not super expensive. It's just, it's old reliable, it's it's great. Chili Bean, some might be tempted to put an F, but I'm gonna put an E, because while it isn't, it doesn't really do much of anything, it does insta-kill any zombie that consumes it. And while not all the most dangerous zombies actually consume plants. Still, that makes up for a lot of zombies. Any zombie you see that you feel like you really just want to get out of there, you could just insta-kill that one zombie. It's a, it's just a, it's basically a free insta-kill on most zombies. And it's not very expensive, it just has a long cooldown, and also um, stuns zombies behind the one that gets insta-killed. Not really useful, but not the worst thing ever. Citron. Uh, very good damage output at a really slow rate of fire. Uh, I don't think it's lower than C for a Citron. I don't know if it gets much higher. It's, it's okay. You. Hmm, 400 sun. It's kind of like Banana Launcher, only instead of one explosion any one like small explosion anywhere on the field it's an explosion directly in front of it i don't know i feel like if anything it's worse than banana launcher actually because banana launcher gets a lot more range i mean the plant food effect which we are going to be taking into consideration the plant food effect for the coconut cannon is really good it pushes all the zombies back to the start and then explodes all of those zombies so in a lot of cases it's an instant lane clear i don't know man i i, I i'll put it in d dust globber is also a d it's it's just kind of a, it's like pepper pulp, but not really that good because, well, it can fire in three lines at once if it's next to Moonflower. On its own, it would probably be E. Actually, no, it would be D on its own. And then powered up, it's nice, and it would be C but it's only when it's powered up. I, I'll leave it in D. I really don't know how to rank this one. A lot of the jungle plants I put in my top 10 just because they were new and I was very impressed by them, but looking back, <sighs> C tier. It's just kind of a walnut that sacrifices defense for actually dealing some damage. So it's better, but also worse. I don't know. That's just like a side grade, I'd say. EM Peach is the first of the tool category that we're going to add because it's really only good for specific things and does nothing else. Which doesn't make it like bad, it's just 100% situational. That being said, EM Peach is actually a really good tool because the robot zombies are some of the most threatening zombies of all and it stuns them for so long and the, the radius is... I think bigger than three by three. It's, I can't, I don't know what the exact radius is, but it's pretty big. So this is a very useful tool. When the situation comes for it, it you're gonna be using it like every time it's ready. Fume Shroom. I really want to put an A. I really like him. His damage output is good. He always damage. There, there, there's no way to escape his damage. The range is the only thing that sucks on him. And his plant food effect is one of the best. It's like it's like coconut cannons. It pushes all the zombies back to the start and also just deals a lot of damage. It's really good. Ugh, fuck you. 
Like, I know people actually really like garlic, but I don't understand. It's just not good, especially in this game when there's so many other options better for just outright killing zombies than setting them up into traps. Even in that aspect, it's really not great. Okay, I just checked. Uh, gold leaf can't be used outside of the Temple of Bloom. It's not exactly a tool because it's not used for killing zombies. I'm gonna judge it based on just as if every level was Temple of Bloom, just for the sake of it, and it can actually be really good for generating lots of sun, but I don't know, it's, it's, I'll put it in D, because it can be pretty useful, especially if you have a, a, other plants that generate a lot of sun, because then you could just get tons and tons of sun and min winter melons everywhere. This is a tool, specific use, the Grimrose is weird, he insta-kills a zombie in the lane, or I think anywhere, and then dies. And if he's powered up, he can do this three times, but still dies. It can be kind of good for getting rid of specific zombies, but you can't exactly choose which ones. So he's kind of just not great. Guacodile? I'd say put him B. He shoots a projectile like a pea shooter, but then when he gets close to a zombie, he charges forth and deals heavy damage to everything he bites as he goes down the whole lane. And he can be placed in water without use of a lily pad, so that's pretty cool. He's the only plant that can do that other than um, Tangle Kelp. Homing Thistle is our first gem plant, I believe. Unless I'm wrong. Wait, hang on. This one. Uh, eh. All right, homing thistle. Uh, I put it in B. It can auto-target the farthest left zombie, which is nice. Hot potato is a tool. <laughs> it sounds so rude. Hurricane. It's another gem plant and a really good one. Like I said, pushing every zombie in the lane back to the start is amazing, and this one also chills them for quite a while. This is hard, because some see Iceberg Lettuce as really good, while at first glance he seems really bad, but I don't think he's like S tier. I'm willing to put him in B. Only because there's a bunch of other plants that can accomplish the same kind of thing as him, but he's really good at what he does. Hypno Shroom is a gem plant, and a very useful one, mostly for its plant food effect. If you can plant food this thing, you get a gargantuar on your side. That's awesome. Outside of that, if a normal zombie eats him, it's not really a big deal, to be honest. Having just a normal zombie on your side kind of sucks, but I guess if it's a road cone robot and stuff like that, it could be pretty good. I'll put it in... B. I kind of want to put it in A, actually, because it also essentially insta-kills any zombie that eats it. So, you know what? A. I like him. Y'all know how I feel about infinite S tier. Oh, yeah. Being able to just not die and just regenerate health as a defensive plant is amazing. Its plant food effect is probably the best defensive thing in the entire game. It's just an amazing plant. And we get the polar opposite, but also similar in terms of immortality, but... It's, why, why would you ever use this? It's really not good. The only situation I could see intensive carrot being useful is if you're reviving something that's really expensive, like a banana launcher or a coconut cannon or a winter melon. Even then, it's not useful overall. Yeah, you know all right. Actually, considering what I just said, I'll bump it up to E. You got lucky, pal. A classic good boy affects the entire lane, but actually just insta kills everything in the lane. Well, almost. It deals incredible damage. Uh, it doesn't insta-kill things like gargantuars, but it reduces their health significantly. It's really good. Colonel Pult? I really want to put an A, to be honest. I mean, yeah, he doesn't do a lot of damage with the kernels, but the butter is so worth having around. And the plant food effect freezes every zombie on the stage with butter. That's... Great. You know, I'm going to keep him in A tier, but I'm going to bump down Hypnoshroom only because you still need to eat Hypnoshroom in order to, for it to actually do anything. Laser Bean is pretty okay. He fires kind of slow, and he costs 200 sun, but the damage is nice, and the beam just instantly pierces every zombie on the in the lane, which is really good. Lightning Reed isn't really great because of how low its damage is, but it can be useful because of, if you get like a bunch of them, then it's actually pretty good because then you're basically laser beaming zombies left and right. Like, it's, it's actually pretty good. Lily pad is just a necessity for that one area. Lava Guava is a decent explosive in the fact that, well, it's not an explosive, but just places a highly damaging tile wherever you want and also deals a bit of damage around it it's kind of nice actually it can be good to um for dealing with gargantuars i don't know magnet shroom is 
so helpful. So, so helpful for certain things. But, you know what? It's A tier. It's not quite... If it... If it worked faster, S tier. But that's the only thing keeping it out of S tier, so, you know, that's nothing to sneeze at. Oof. Yeah. Your plant food effect is nice, though. Melon Pult, uh, of course. Where else would you go? Moonflower is weird. It is actually a pretty good sun generator if you have a bunch of them and have you. The night plants are weird because it's like all of them are kind of really not good, but then if you use them together, they're pretty good. But you know what? With the fact that Moonflower essentially doesn't have a plant food effect with how terrible that one is, being like the worst plant food effect in the entire game, C tier. As opposed to it though, Nightshade? A, at least. Because while when unpowered, it is one of the worst plants in the entire game, being able to only fire three times and having melee range only, but powered up, it's essentially just a better pea shooter that does heavy damage. Then again, saying that out loud and also needing to be used with Moonflower, I think we'll bump it down to B. It's still really good. If you're using Moonflower, definitely use it, but if not, don't. That's really all that comes to it. Peanut, uh, B? Beanut. Ah, fuck you, pal. You suck. I it hate. I really hate to say it because I love your design, but it's really not worth using this plant at all. Really, like, ugh, it's so bad. P shooter is going in C tier because he's just the all-around just normal guy. He's just the like the Mario of this. Like, you know, it's just he goes right smack in the middle. Pepper Pult. It has the splash damage of a melon, but isn't as strong and can heat up plants. I kind of want to put him in B, but I feel like the sun cost would make it a C. Yeah, I don't know. He's just kind of all right. All right, now we're getting into the tool plants that aren't even good at what they do. Like this plant is amazing because the dinosaurs suck and is the only thing to get rid of the dinosaurs and then once you get rid of the dinosaurs the dinosaurs actually help you but it recharges so slow costs 150 sun and only affects one lane and di more dinosaurs can s appear after you've used it it's just not even a good tool like i mean bring it whenever you're dealing with dinosaurs but i mean it's not even gonna be that helpful, it's kinda just a little bit of a support, it's not a problem solver, it infuriates me. Fat Bean is actually pretty decent. Area of effect is nice, constant just damage around him, you can put him like next to things to deal side damage. He's pretty good. Now I know everyone's gonna hate me for this, but it's the truth. Potato mine isn't good! Like, okay, yeah, low cost and is an explosion that insta-kills zombies, but the range and setup time is really what kills it. And the recharge time, too. Like, you can only place one every, like, three minutes, it feels like, and they take what feels like a full minute to charge, and then they'll kill maybe, like, two, three zombies at most, and even then, that's chancy. It's not, not good, I'm sorry. Uh, Primal Pea Shooter. Holy shit is an amazing plant. Even though it's brief, the stun on it is great, the damage is nice, slow fire rate sucks, but the chance to just knock zombies back, if you put even two of these in the same lane, Zombies are barely ever going to reach you. It's so good. Knockback is amazing in this game. Continuing the theme of these primal plants being fucking great, we have primal potato mine, which is what potato mine really should be. A tier, explosive. Whew. Primal sunflower generates and costs 25 more sun. I'd say it's worth it using over normal sunflower in certain situations. Primal walnut is a walnut that has a fast recharge time. That's incredible. It's 25 more sun, but it's worth the price, man. I'm gonna put Puff Shroom in C. Even though they nerfed it so that it has a very small window of opportunity to live, you can play so many so fast. And then remember, the plant food effect affects every single one on the field and makes them rapid fire and renews them. 
So, if you play your cards right, you can just have an immortal army of puff shrooms. I mean, they're not strong, and really they only are good in the beginning, and then you can just get stronger plants, so maybe they're a D tier, but uh, I really like puff shroom, honestly. Now, I know I play, I praised Red Stinger in the past. He's really not that great, but I do feel like he's better than you'd expect. He can be nice to just put in as an attacking plant, but then, whoop, you need a defense plant really quick. Grab him, put him in the front there you go as an attacking plant i don't think he's worth the price but with his other properties i think he is and his plant food effect is actually pretty good i'll put him in c repeater is bad in the sense that everything else is better than him he's really not that bad it's just like 200 sun for just double pea shooter when you could get like other things like like laser bean it's just i'm sorry man it's just a matter of circumstance not your fault rota bag is weird and d tier it's not actually bad and it can float over certain obstacles but it's Know, it's weird to use. Oh, man, don't make me do this. I really... You're fucking adorable. Ah, oh, come on, poop poop boy. Come on, poop boy. I love you. You're adorable, and you're actually pretty good for dealing with stuff like brickhead zombies and ice block zombies, zombies that just have a lot of armor. But other than that, you're not good. You're the only knight plant that is actually not worth powering up because, you know, you have to be eaten to be used, and even then, that effect is not good. Ugh, I can't put you higher than D because of how situational you are, but I love you. Ah, Shrinking Violet became a gem plant, and that is the most nightmarish thing to zombie kind. It's amazing. Shrinking zombies greatly reduces the damage they deal and their health. It insta-kills mimics. It has a 3x3 area effect. It's the perfect thing to use for gargantuars because it, if you shrink a gargantuar, it can't even throw its imp because its imp doesn't exist anymore. That's amazing! And it's only 50 sun. The only the only downside is that it takes a long time to recharge. That's it. Snapdragon's an A tier. I'm just gonna he's just good. Just like whoosh. This area is just damaged. It's just, it's just good, man. Now we get the spiky boys. Uh, it's a little hard to place. One of them costs a bunch more sun for not much more damage, but for more survivability. You know what? Considering that the survivability of rolling objects is a big reason why you'd even use these. I'm going to put Spike Rock in A. Oh my god, Split P is weird because it's sort of like a tool, but it's technically still can fire in front of itself and you can't place it in behind zombies in an emergency situation. There we go. It's kind of a tool. Eh. For Shroom, I wish was better because I like the idea, but it's, I mean, it's definitely not F tier. It's actually kind of good because being able to spawn so many spore shrooms will just cause a distraction for the zombies but i don't know i mean if it was any better it would actually probably be overpowered a little bit it's just it's e tier fuck you oh boy we get to make another tier you guys check it out spring bean gets his own tier for being absolute horseshit barely any range doesn't spring zombies back that far at all and then goes to sleep for like an hour. I don't know if the spring bean blover combo still exists today, but we're not even gonna consider that even if it does. Ugh, it's just why. Oh yeah, squash is a gem plant, but not great. Really not great. So long of a recharge time. You know, I'll put him in E because he does insta kill, but he just kind of has a little bit, a bit of the potato mine situation going on. Yeah. Stalia is actually pretty good. Um, I'd say a three by three big powerful slowdown. I think the slowdown from Stalia is even slow. It slows zombies down even more than freezing would. So I'm gonna put him in B. Stunion. Stunion is a worse this guy, the chili bean, because he does the same thing, but doesn't insta kill. It's so bad. Uh, Sunshroom is an A tier. Quick to get up and then eventually becomes a really strong sun producer. I'd say he goes an A. Sunbean, however, is 
not good. All right, now we'll put him in E. He's at least kind of useful, maybe sometimes, but really not that much. Sunflower is a C tier, you know, average sun producer. Does what it does. It's good. Tall nut, I'm gonna put in D, only because it does provide a lot of protection, but I don't know. I mean, compared to walnut here, putting in just that, that again, the average. I don't know. I feel like the, the tall aspect isn't overall that useful because there's not a lot of things that the tallness covers, and then it's just basically more durable, but a lot more sun. I think it's more worth it just to use walnut in most situations. You know, I'm gonna put walnut up a notch, actually, because of just how useful he is compared to most defensive options. He's just overall something you're gonna want to have almost all the time, actually. Yeah, walnut. Tangle Kelp is in the same ballpark as Split Pea because it's like insta kills zombies in the water, so it's really only useful in water levels but is really useful in water levels? I don't know, I don't feel right putting him in the tool category, but like, that's the thing. He can kill any, he can insta kill like any kind of zombie, except I think Gargantuar, but only in water. So, weird. I don't know, out, outclassed. Same way as Repeater, except just not really good. Time Warp is the worst tool because while he sets every zombie back to the start, he also fully heals them. He's the last resort plant. He's like, if you're about to die and you just don't have enough time, you have a sun, but you don't have enough time to replant everything to get the zombies away from your house, plant him. There's no other reason to use him. And it sucks because look how adorable he is. I love his design. I want a plush of him. Tile turnip. Uh, can be really strong if you have a lot of sun, but I don't know, I, he's like Windermelon, except not, he doesn't feel like as worthwhile. Twin Sunflower, I'll put in C, I don't know, it's kind of worth getting sometimes. Wintermelon, uh, S tier, of course. And that about covers all of the plants that you can get for completely free in this game. I'd say this would be my official PVZ2 tier list. So yeah, S tiers are plants that you're always gonna at least want like one or two of those in any level you go into. A's are always good options. Yeah, that's, this is just, this is it. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please make this video more popular than my old tier list just because I don't want anyone to see that anymore. I don't like it. Um, yeah. Okay, bye.